So now we want to um, integrate something a bit more complex, right? So it's all good, grand having a having a loading thingy, but we need something to load, <laughs> right? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the authentication. Um, so inside of the store, we will create a new file. Okay, and we're going to call this auth.js, like that. So we're going to import the uh, store uh, from um, oops, from the, uh, the main store, essentially. Um, okay, so what we're going to need to install um, is we're going to need to install Axios. Uh, we could just use, you know, fetch, uh, um, you know, the stand, like, kind of built-in stuff. But um, I like Axios, I like how it works. Um, so we'll just use that package because it kind of makes it a bit neater um, and cleaner. Um, so yeah, just yarn add um, axios. Is, it, is that how you spell it? Let's see. Yep. Damn, my tea's gone cold. Oh well. Um, so we um, now need to import Axios, right? Import Axios, Axios, there we go, from, um, there we go, oh, oops, trigger finger, there we go. Okay, so now we that's pretty much all we need to import. Um, and then we can say uh, export default and basically now we're just going to have a, a big object of things, um, but we need to, you know, tell it some things. We're going to say that it's namespaced, um, namespaced, um, true, like that. That's kind of it, right? Um, now we can, you know, build this. And what this is, this is a, a, a module, right? We're creating um, a module which we will then import into here, which we can do now actually. Why not? Um, so you just do that, and then you'd say uh, import, import auth from, and then, uh, whoops, from auth, like that. Okay, so now if we go back to um, to the auth uh, module, we can, it keeps it very clean because it separates everything, right? So we're separating the main store from the auth store, so we don't get confused, it's like a really, really long f store file. It's just broken up into like neat, small, little, and everyone's happy and fluffy and brown-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, so yes, inside of here, we are going to do pretty much the same thing that we do um, in the main store. We can have the getters, we can uh, state the state, you know, state like that. Um, and then we can have the mutation, mutations like so. And we can have the actions. Um, so the actions essentially are just methods that you can call from the store. Uh, we'll, we'll, you, I'll give you an example shortly. Um, and that seems, yeah, that's about it. That's all we need um, for now. Um, yeah, it's not auto-indenting it. Ugh. Okie dokie. So, right, now we need to start with the authentication system. So we've, we've kind of built a little bit for the, the front end, right? We've, we've kind of given it a bit of a framework. Now we need to um, set it up on the back end, right? So um, we will head over to the Symfony you know, application. Okay, so what we'll do is we will start this uh, saga off by creating an auth controller uh, .php like so. And again, because I'm really lazy, I'm just going to copy uh, this controller over, the app controller, and then just rename it like that. Because you have everything you need in there, right? You don't have to write it all out again. You know, so uh, we can rename this, and we're going to call this um, user register. Okay. Um, and what would we need? We are going to actually return a JSON response. Um, basically, it's the same as a response. It's just JSON, and we won't need that. Okay, and then the um, obviously the endpoint, uh, the endpoint would be register, right? Um, so okay, we we've got that. Uh, don't worry, it's complaining that we're not returning something. Um, we will we'll come back to this. Okay, we've set that up all good and 
you know, all good and proper. So yeah, we'll come back to this. Um, we'll just leave it as it is right now. Um, we need to um, essentially configure Lexi JWT authentication bundle. God, that's a long name. We need to go over to the installation section in the documentation. Uh, obviously, we've installed this. If you remember, we installed it in the um, in the first video. So we should we just need to check, right? We need to check that we don't already have the um, the uh, JWT uh, tokens generated, um, as in um, the uh, private and public. Um, to um, are they called tokens? I don't know what they're called. Oh no, SSL keys, there we go. Um, so we haven't got them generated, right? Because if they were, they would show up in a package called JWT inside of your um, con config uh, directory. So what we need to do is copy and paste that uh, command to generate them, hit enter, and there we go. Um, now you see we've got that inside of our uh, thingy-majigger. Um, and if we open up the packages, we can see in here we do have, there we go, we have a Lexi JWT auth um, YAML file, which is pointing to our ENV stuff, right? So fine, great, cool, wonderful. Um, now what we need to do is we need to do some of the serious stuff. We need to head over to security and tell it, you know, let Symfony know, dude, we're using this package for the security. Um, and it's pretty much written in here right it's like it's all there so i'm just going to be a lazy person and yeah copy and paste it um what we're going to need to do is we need to actually configure the database connection right um so we need to go into um, the dot env file which is here all right okay so in here i'm just going to add my credentials uh you can you know add your whatever your database credentials are with whichever one you want. I'm using Postgres, you can use uh, MySQL or, or whatever. Um, the uh, name of the database is going to be API example underscore db, like so. Uh, right, okay, so now what we can do is we can say bin uh, console uh, doctrine, doctrine uh, database and create like so and it goes away does some magic and it creates the database awesome okay so the database is now created now what we want to do is we want to go um, back to the security thing we've got this lexic or uh, JWT authentication package but we don't have a user entity to to work with it right so we need to create a, a user entity so in order to do that we need to put in a package uh, called um, the maker bundle uh, so we're just going to say composer rec or reek uh, maker, like so. There we go, and that will download. And the maker bundle basically just enables us to make stuff for Symfony, like uh, you know entities and controllers and all those fluffy, wonderful things. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, go com bin. Oh, is it console bin bin console? I always get those mixed up. Bin console there we go um, and we're going to say make and here we're going to say make user um, this is part of the security thing that is in the maker bundle uh, so we're going to call the name of the class is going to be user um, it's going to store data in the database yeah great um, and it's going to use the email address uh, will this app need to hash and check pa I definitely think so if we're creating an app that doesn't then there's something very very wrong um, right okay Okay, so what it's tried to do is it's tried to um, update our security.yaml, uh, but it couldn't, okay? Um, so that's a bit annoying, but we will just copy it uh, like so. Ta-da, there we go. Um, and that's that's it. So normally it should do that automatically, but it hasn't for some reason, I'm not sure why. Now what do we need to do? So we've got the database connection, we've got a user. Okay, so now we need to add some things to that user um, uh, entity right so we've got if we uh, let's just find where that is if we go into the entity uh, directory and look at the user here we can see we have um, email roles password right um, so you know that that's okay but I mean your users might have names um, and they might have you know ages and 
you know, genders and whatnot. So maybe they might want to fill that in or you might want to have that data. So what we'll do is we'll just create entity, big titty on the end. Um, so we'll make an entity, um, but we're not going to make a new one. We're just going to update the existing one, which is user. And we will give it a property of uh, name. And I did that as a capital for some reason, which I shouldn't have. Um, I'll just fix that in a minute. It's going to be a string. Uh, it's going to be length 255. And it will not be null in the database. And that's it. That's all we want to add, right? Um, so now if we you know, see, we can see here we have a new, um, a new entity, a new property inside of the entity. Um, so I'm just going to fix that uh, name uh, problem because I used a capital rather than a, a lowercase, uh, like so. There we go. There we go. There we go. I hope this doesn't come back to to bite me. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Now it's all all dandy. Um, so what we'll do is we just we, we want to update the database, right? So we're going to copy this command here where it says uh, PHP bin console make migration, and we're going to throw that in, hit enter. Okay. So what that's done is that we'll have created a migration up here. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, update the database with this next command here that says PHP bin console doctrine migrate migrate. I mean, talk about over engineering. I mean, why not just bin console doctrine migrate? You know, maybe. Anyway, um, we'll execute this overly complicated command. Um, you're about to execute blah, 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 and it's basically telling you if you've got stuff in your database, you're going to lose it. Um, yes, we're fine with that. Okay, so um, that's that. We have a database connected, um, and fantastic. Um, so what we can do is we can now um, configure the um, authentication further, right? We've kind of made a, a decent start, but we need to um, we need to add some new, more things in. Um, so we're going to work on the um, register um, endpoint. So first off, the first thing we need to do to enable that is we need to go to the packages and we need to go to security again. We need to scroll down here. So here we can see the access controls is we're only allowed API login and we're only allowed um, as an, an anonymous user, and then everything else has to be fully authenticated, um, and that's going to pose a problem because you know if you want to register a user, you don't want the user to have to be authenticated before they can register because that would be insane. Um, so we are going to create another one, and we're going to say API register, um, and essentially this will just enable that to work, right? Um, and if you know just to give it some sort of visual thing, we'll just create. Um, a register um, inside of the YAML here, and we, you know, we're just going to say uh, this is going to be anonymous. We're going to say true. We'll give it the pattern, and we'll say something like um, uh, API register, like that. That's it. That's all we need. Um, okay, so now we have that endpoint is accessible. So let's head over to the front end and go to the um, register component. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I think we can get rid of the h1 tag. We don't need that. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, we need the data like so, and we need to return an object return, um, and in here we're going to say we're going to say form. This is just how I set it out. You can set it however you want. And what were the fields that we needed? We needed a name, we needed an email, and we needed a password, like so. There we go. Um, I It's from, not form. <laughs> okay, so there we go. We have a form now, uh, essentially, in the data thing. Uh, that's the structure we're going to use, and that's what we're going to send um, to the uh, back end. So in here, we need to create a form. And frankly, I can't be asked to write out that HTML, so I'm just going to paste it in from um, an existing uh, one, and it saves time, right? All we're doing is we've got um, rows, card, form, um, and we, we need to create that this, this method that doesn't exist yet. Um, and it's just um, accessing 
Oh, okay, actually we don't need that because there's only one. We can just get rid of that. Uh, we only have one name, so we don't need first and last names. Like so, name, form, name. Okay, um, right, so now that's all in there. We've got the email, we've got the password, um, and that's it. That's all we need, right? And we have a, a button to submit it. Um, fantastic, okay, I think everything's good there. So the thing we don't have, is we don't have this. We don't have the submit um, method. Right, so we need to create that now. Um, so what we'll do is we will, um, underneath the data, we'll say methods, like that. And then there's a submit method. And for now, um, we don't really need to do anything in here. Uh, we can just um, console log something. Uh, let's just say um, submitted. Whoop, whoop. Sound of the bully, no. So if we head over to that um, register endpoint uh, now, there we go. We can see that now we have a form um, with the name, email, and password. So if we just inspect uh, this and we go over to the console, right. So what we can do in here is we can say uh, Bob, and his name email is going to be bob at gmail.com, and his password is going to be whatever that is. Uh, so if we hit continue, there we go. We can see we got a console log submitted, whoop, whoop. Um, excellent. So we now know that that form is submitting correctly um, and everything is is right in the world.